This is what 29,000 rubber ducks look like. And they are the reason that ocean current maps look like this. You see, back in 1992, lots of things were happening. Clinton was presidenting, Nirvana was teen spiriting, and the container ship Evergreen was transporting a lot of children's bath toys from Hong Kong to Washington. However, they were only half successful at delivering these because right around here, four days into their journey, the Evergreen was met with some hurricane force winds. Now, hurricane force winds don't sound fun in any circumstances, but especially in the middle of the ocean with waves like this and containers stacked like this on the back of your ship. Two tall columns stacked six containers high, each snapped off and fell into the ocean. Yes, disastrous I know. So many Washington baths now left unrubbered up. Oh, and the 12 giant sea containers now in the ocean. One of which happened to burst open. The same one carrying 29,000 bath floaties. This is where some rubber duck anatomy comes in. You see, all normal ducks and most rubber ducks have a hole in the bottom, which means eventually they will fill with water and sink. But not these ones. Due to a random decision in the manufacturing process, these toys, nicknamed the Friendly Floaties, didn't have a hole, meaning they would never take on water and stay floating on the surface. This was revolutionary for cartographers because believe it or not, it's kind of hard to track the movement of all the ocean currents. In the normal process of tracking, they would drop 500 to 1,000 drift bottles at a time and then wait to find where they washed up on shore. But by the time you take into account how many are lost, how many are found, and how many are actually reported, then only 2% of them are recovered, which is a really little amount, yet somehow still higher than the percentage of viewers who were subscribed to me. Please subscribe. So they would receive around 10 to 20 bottles. And when you then take into account the 1.335 sextillion litres of water in the ocean, you can see how it would be hard to track all of its movements with just 10 bottles at a time. So having 29,000 floaties to track was game changing. I mean, it would be pretty unethical for scientists to dump that many pieces of plastic into the ocean, but seeing as it already happened accidentally, why not take advantage? So ocean cartographers Curtis Ebsmeyer and James Ingraham began searching for them. And just a mere 10 months later, on what was going to be another Monday in Monday, the first 10 floaties were found on a beach in Sitka, Alaska, over 3,200 kilometers from their starting point. Ebsmeyer then made a theoretical ocean currents map that he had hoped would have been proven by tracking the ducks including a bold prediction that some of the ducks would go north and through the Arctic ice, eventually ending up in the Atlantic. And he was right. Over the next few years, Ebsmeyer worked with beachcombers, coastal workers and local residents to locate and recover washed up floaties. Each were put into Ingraham's computer model, an ocean surface current simulation, to predict the ending locations of further floaties. They started washing up in Japan, Canada, New England, Hawaii, and many more countries. The data that was being collected from these ducks was so valuable that they started offering a $100 reward for any that was reported and authenticated. And if you're sitting there thinking, damn, too bad I missed out on that whole $100, well, you're in luck. Because if you find an authentic, friendly floaty on the beach, some have been sold up to $1,000 at auction. The last one that was found was a while ago though, back in 2013. But there are still ones in circulation, so don't let that put a dampener on your dream of finding one and becoming a thousand... Uh, thousands are still out there somewhere. A lot predicted to be stuck in the Great Pacific garbage patch. This is what they actually look like. A yellow duck, a green frog, a blue turtle, and a red beaver. Though only the turtle remains colorful, while the others have faded to white. Nowadays, we have a pretty solid idea on the flow of ocean currents, but that would have taken way longer to map if it weren't for these little yellow bath floats.